Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. Um, so you with the Zurich Ballet. Uh-huh. Are, are yes. you in Zurich at the moment? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, where are you from originally? I'm Spanish. I'm from a city called Albacete. A small, okay. really small town. Oh, I see. Yeah. And uh, how did you start in ballet? Well, it's... I don't know, it's a bit funny because um, when I was really, really young, I was uh, dancing at home, but mm -hmm. I was dancing like kind of, you know, Spanish dance, flamenco and all these, oh, yeah. all these things. Nothing to do with ballet, obviously. Mm -hmm. But then my, uh, my mom took me to a, to a school and I used to start doing ballet and a bit of flamenco also, like... You know, in Spain, we do a bit of everything. And that's it. And then I started in the in the school, in the conservatoire in Albacete. And yeah, I like it and keep going. And then you can, I love flamenco. Do you still do it? I do here in Zurich, actually. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I, I go one, one day a week. Mm -hmm. I have like two hours classes with... Uh, with a girl who, who who is from also from Spain. That's amazing. It's great that you keep it up. You know that you still do it. Um, are there a lot of um, uh, young children still doing the flamenco dancing? Uh, back in Spain. In Spain, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah really? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. really popular. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's like. Uh, dancers like professional dancers like me I think most of us um started you know when we were kids I see mm -hmm. most of the flamenco not flamenco but like in the Spanish dance way you know oh, more than ballet classical yeah yeah and coming from a small city like that is it was it um was it sort of uh, normal to go to ballet uh, or or was it was a one of a kind? <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah. as I say, like my family doesn't have anything to do with ballet or anything. Mm. And I didn't knew what ballet was also when I was a kid. So it was everything was like super new for, for me or my family. And then it was this time when I was what, 16, when I left my hometown to finish my, my, the last four years of my studies in Madrid. So also was a big thing for my family because, you know, uh, I was 16 and yeah, no one was, was sure about what was going to happen. You know, I was mm -hmm. leaving my hometown and everything was like, well, good luck. Let's see yeah. what this is. And then suddenly I, fi I finished my studies and I got my first job in, in London, in EMB. So... Oh, were well, you in e &B. Oh. Yeah, that was oh. my first company. Oh, really? That was oh, my first that's company. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, um, and how long did you stay then at EMB? I was there for seven years. Okay. Yeah. And then to Zoom. Uh, I, I was mm. there with uh, Wayne Eaglin when he was directing. Oh, yeah. And then I did I did Tamara's first year, and then I left. Uh, I went back to Madrid to mm -hmm. Compañía Nacional de Danza with Jose Carlos Martinez. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, and then I did five years in Madrid, and then I came to Zurich Is with it? Christian. Oh, I see. And how yeah. long have you been there now? This is my third season with them. Okay. So when, when um, last year in, in March, when the lockdown was announced, how did it affect you there at the company? Well, uh, we were doing Nutcracker and I think as a dancer, you know, we never had the time off like so long. So I think for a bit, the dancers were happy to kind of stop our job a little bit. 
at the beginning. Also, we had just before the lockdown, we had the foresight program and everyone was like super busy and like, you know, mentally and physically really tired. So I think for us, it was good. Yeah. The mm -hmm. beginning. Mm -hmm. But obviously after like a month, it was like, okay, come, you know, can we go back and do something? Because otherwise, mm. not, it's not our life. Yeah, I, I hear that a lot that uh, artists say that the first part was almost like, okay, now it's time to just, you know, yeah. breathe a little bit and, and relax. And I think, of course, for dancers, because you are just constantly training, 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 and um, and yeah. Um, did you also then, as the time you said, as the time went on, you felt like now you want to do it? Did you have uh, Zoom classes and things like that? What did the company then do for for you to keep well, you motivated? The company after a while they offer classes and stuff. They also provide us some uh, lino, so oh, we yeah? could train. At home. Mm -hmm. That was really nice. Uh, we took the decision not to take company classes because it was so much going on online with any other companies and stuff that we were happy to to do things, you know, ourselves with someone else. I was actually taking classes with uh, Pedro La Petra from EMB. He's a really good friend of mine. And yeah, he offered, he offered us to teach and it was like a group of seven, sometimes eight, nine people. It was really nice because, you know, when you do something that you love and with people like that you, you know and you have a good relationship, it's, it's, it's always really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, this is, uh, this is when you do it at home, it's quite different than doing it in a studio. Uh, did you find those um, sort of restrictions in your home that you didn't have the space or a proper bar or something? Did you find it also at times a bit frustrating? Yeah, 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 for sure. It's, mm -hmm. it's hard because, you know, the, the floor is not the same. Uh, the space, you cannot do like jump, jumping. You cannot jump. You cannot really turn. But, you know, mm -hmm. in a way um like doing just like a bar and a bit of center and stuff um i think we were at least me i was more free to think more like my body and not 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 to be like super i don't have to be super concentrated in you know in the exercise and with the music and do it this way so it was it was nice to have the freedom but obviously mm -hmm. it's it will be never the, the same as mm. in the studio. Do you do you think this also gave you a bit of time to think about artistry? You know about uh, what you are doing and and how you are doing it, and not necessarily about just technique. Yeah, I think. I mean, actually, I've been thinking more about this like later on mm. after. After the second, when we stopped the second time, it was harder for me, I think, oh, artistry. Okay. Yeah, after the summer and we came on uh, in Zurich, when, July, July, August, and then we did a premiere of Sleeping Beauty and we only do, did two, so, two shows and then that was it. And after that, I was like, wow, this is, again, really hard because, you know, body-wise, it's not the same when you are, when you have the training and performing and, you know, the whole stress and blah, blah, blah. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It was just, it's been hard this last mm -hmm. month, and I have to say. I'm uh, glad you mentioned about your body because that's also something that I think about uh, is that the dancer, your body is really your instrument. And if you if you used to using these muscles and you know moving and in different ways that you only do in studio or on a stage, you cannot use those muscles, say, for instance, in a living room. So did you also feel 
uh, and, and of course you are also very conscious of your bodies. So did you feel uh, the difference in your body from, from not being in the studio all the time? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For me, one is the most hard thing is, is right now is the, to stay in shape like I was before the lockdown, but it's, it's really impossible. Uh, even now that we have the studio and we have normal classes and some rehearsals because we are still not um, back fully, even now it's hard because I think personally, um, what I what I really miss is the stage, you no? Know? And we we are not doing the work to get to the stage because we don't know when it's gonna be possible. Mm -hmm. So for me, one of the hardest things is to stay in shape and you know eat well and try to be yeah. skinny and you know it's yeah. it's really difficult. It's really difficult. So the classes that you are doing now, is it also in groups and smaller groups or um, what, what is it like now to, to train? No, in Ballet Zurich, uh, it was a period of time where we were doing groups, but now normally most of the time is always everyone. Oh, okay, yeah. We are not the company anyway. We are more like 50, something like that. Mm. So normally it's like two classes. And we only have like two hours rehearsals a day because, uh, yeah, they we have uh, they call it kusarbeit or something like this. Or, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my German is really bad. Yeah. So yeah, we are not working the full full hours. So mm -hmm. that's the only thing we um, we are doing. And do you do live streamings now, or do you just don't do any performances? Well, we only did one, like a couple, uh, like a month ago. Mm -hmm. We did Interreise from Christian's book, but that's, and the junior, the junior ballet uh, also did the, their program, but that was it. For now, uh, we are getting ready a new premiere for May, I think, if we are allowed to perform, but we don't, we don't really know yet. Mm -hmm. If it's and gonna and how how was it for you this uh, the the streamings because then there's no audience do you sense that as well when you dance oh yeah yeah you can you can feel when when you are on the stage and you're performing you can feel the house is empty you know you don't have the same I don't know how you say it, but that energy that like mm. energy you know coming from from the outside is not there it's mm. not there. Plus, in the other side, you know, is a lot of people is watching anyway. Yeah. But it's not the same. It's not cozy enough, you know. Mm. And I think, yeah, we all miss that also. Yeah. Um, what you you come from a, a small uh, city, you say, or small small town? Mm -hmm. Um. Do you think that maybe we should reconsider educating uh, children in art, um, the same as we say educate maths and science, that we make it compulsory in schools so that all children, even in smaller towns like where you come from, who don't have exposure to art, but that they have the ability to, to do all forms of art, not to become artists, but really to have that exposure. Because like you were now at a young age, you know, you, you were dancing, but of course this shaped you in becoming a dancer, but also this will shape a child into becoming the audience that appreciate the dance. Yeah, I, th I think it's, it's, it could be really important to have some, I wouldn't say like, classes but like uh i don't know like take them to see stuff take them to see some rehearsals even if they don't like it you know mm -hmm. but you never know one day they, they might be interested on this uh and as you said maybe not as a ballet dancer but just as a public or i don't know in the future maybe they are interested in become i don't know to do something with the technicians or, you know, it's so many yeah. jobs that, that we can offer in the arts. 
and yeah as you say in the small towns it's really difficult sometimes to get you know uh especially ballet uh mm. it's, it's hard to to see so mm. it and will it will help to to have some new ideas how to mm. you know, introduce introduce dance in into the the smaller smaller kids mm. because say. also um that there's been research done now to show uh, we, uh, that that proves that dance for example um changes the development of the brain and that you know it's, it's movement it's about movement it's not necessarily ballet but but the movement but uh, um you know so if if we could expose children to that and also give children a chance to express themselves in different ways not you know in in movements for example or with an instrument or singing or things like that yeah it's really important also like um there is so many people like actors and musicians that normally they don't use their bodies and yeah. so and sometimes they have to and for them it's so difficult you know because they i don't know some some of them they just feel stupid or they're really sad you know but as you say it doesn't mean that he, everyone has to do ballet obviously it's impossible mm. but it would be nice to have a a, a sense of you know movement to know how how the body works a bit and you know also to work on the space you know some people when when you tell them things they're just like what are you what are you telling me no so it's a bit of everything mm. and i think it's, it could be really important mm. um and the other thing is that uh, what i also think about is the the fact that we don't know much about artists you know it's it's almost as if um when we see you on stage it looks so effortless it looks so um you know as if you were just born to do it and but we never know really and, and people have these very uh stereotypical ideas of ballet now always it's always about the girl's feet in the point shoes or it's always about um you know they they have they have things that that they see and maybe it's a, a, a movie that's been made that's not really accurate and then they get the information from there and think and and have this idea of the ballet world but wouldn't it be great if we could have artists sort of not just talk about all the competitions they won but also uh how they became the dancers and what they learn and and the positive things and but also the negative things and, and not the negative things but you know like how did i overcome this injury or um how did i um you know get to where i am now because there were disappointments on the way and of course i i i think everybody has this you know uh you know that we're we're on this way to becoming the dancer you had to overcome many things and i was thinking if we talk more about that then people will also have the um you know a connection almost and understand mm -hmm. you know what uh during this lock uh, the the lockdown i've been doing some um meetings like uh like with you in uh via zoom and stuff uh with the school in my hometown most oh, wow. of them yeah, yeah with, the, with the little kids because obviously for the kids i think this this time was really hard because you know especially in spain they were really locked down at home mm -hmm. so they couldn't do anything and yeah we did a few 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 times and it was really nice to for them to see someone like me a professional dancer to talk about my life about how how uh, i ha i had my my first job all the audition times also my injuries also how how i take care of myself when i don't dance or like what i eat but it was something really interesting because um 
most of the question also they were coming from the parents more more than ah. from the from the yeah. little one yeah but they, you know they, they don't know anything about mm. our life you know it, they they don't know how how it works they don't know as you said no they only see the show and everything is so beautiful and nice and wow they're amazing but mm. the background is like wow you know it's not yeah. so easy sometimes so mm. it's so easy mm -mm. nothing is easy so I think if we if we can share more, like mm. us, the ballet dancers, like the ones, the older ones, mm. I think we could make a difference into the new generation also, I think. I love what you're saying. It's wonderful, really. Um, and what you did, it's it's this is what I, I'm thinking about, you know, that because for a child you you never know when you talk you know you've talked to the children you know know who you've touched or who you've inspired uh who now suddenly has a has a different opinion about it or or gets inquisitive and start looking at other dancers or or what dance is all about and um yeah i think also i think children have a natural ability to move and they want to, and, and they're always active and move. And even if we can get them to do, uh, you know, like I say, expressing themselves through movement or, or um, just using movement in play, for example, then already we've, we've um, done something for this child, for their development. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is fantastic what you did. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Yeah, well, I, really like, I really like yeah. it because, um, yeah, you can see that everyone is so lost, you know. Mm -hmm. And the other day we did another one with uh, with people from from the school also from ballet from ballet dancers in, that they are now in the school mm -hmm. with parents, but also it was musician people around, and it's completely an, a different world. And they were asking things that, you know, we think is really normal and we are not, you know, and you have to explain them and like, uh, yeah, they, they think we can dance forever and our career is really short, you know, uh, the, the difference of the salaries is just the ballet dancers, we don't make money, you know, and it's just all these things that, that we have to share everything like the good things obviously but also yeah. the not so good things as well you know we have injuries we have yeah problems with uh with uh eating we have it's tough it's not so mm -hmm. easy you know yeah. if you are you are talented obviously it, it could be much more easier but when you have talent it could be also difficult yeah because you you know you have to also fit no in the company with dancers with director with yourself mm. so that is true yeah, I, think, I think it's a nice a nice way of sharing especially okay. in this time yeah yeah um but uh yeah in that and actually in that sense it's also good for you you know it's also i think good for you to talk about this and to um, you know, the questions that they raise make probably you also think of what you are yeah. doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also, like, uh, I think ballet dancers, I mean, I had so many interviews during my career. And yeah, I think they always concentrate in the good stuff. Like, they don't, and some dancers, they're not also, they're not like mm, comfortable to speak about the bad things. Mm -hmm. you know and I always say most of everything you know if you're injured you're injured like mm -hmm. you know sometimes you have you just need to know how much you can push or you know even if the the the, the ballet master is there pushing you sometimes we have to say listen if I do it one more time I'm gonna break mm -hmm. you know and all these things yeah not mm. everyone does it. so 
Yeah. And for us, I mean, for me, it helps to to let it out, no? Like, mm. if I have a problem, it, and and I can talk with someone, I I will I will do it. Yeah. I will for sure do it. And I'm sure any help, any any anything I can say today, probably, mm. you know, no no yeah. one knows, but like it could it could go into uh, someone's mentality exactly. and yeah open their eyes i don't know yeah no i i um i strongly believe that and this is also the motivation why i'm doing these talks because i think mm -hmm. um you know that also artists tell their side or their insight or how they felt or you know how they coped with lockdown um and you never know who listens, who who just exactly. needed those words, or just needed to understand that they didn't feel the same, or they felt the same, and and uh, and so on. But yeah, um, yeah of course, uh, the 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 third lockdown, the this one that we're in now, it seemed to be for everybody a bit of a difficult one because it's it's so prolonged. Um, what do you do to keep yourself motivated? Well, I'm gonna be really honest. I'm mm. not really motivated at all right now. Mm. It's really hard. It's been really hard. Uh, also, we've been having like, uh, yeah, so much time off, like free time to think. And to be honest, uh, I moved to Zurich because of the work and we are not working. So for me, it's like, because my life, kind of, I have my my partner is in is in Madrid, my family is there. So, yeah, here you know it's it's hard if if you don't have your your life done here. So, I really I am really struggling with this here mentally. Yeah. And also, yeah, like we are rehearsing stuff, but we don't know for when or for what so it's it's not so easy it's also this thing where i think when you're rehearsing um i assume uh, that that if you not if if you have that thought that maybe it wouldn't happen anyway then it's not you know then it's not so full on there yeah, yeah. well it, it it also depends on the dancer because there is a lot of people who love to rehearse and to be on the studio, but it's not my case. I have to say, I love to be on the stage. I'm, I'm a stage person, you know? Mm. And yeah, it's, it's not easy if we don't have the, the goal yeah. there, no? Yeah. So. But Esteban, what did you do that is so completely out of the normal that you never have done before during lockdown did you have a hobby or a um or did you start something new no well i started to i started to do um an online uh massage course because oh. I, I like to massage yeah so, wow yeah i'm trying to finish it now oh, um, okay. yeah that's that's the only okay. Wow, Something it's a great, it's a great that. thing that you did. Wow. I don't yeah. know. I'm, I'm kind of interested in, you know, one day, I mean, my ballet career mm -hmm. is going to end soon. So I have to start thinking about the next. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but actually you will be, um, you are a lot aware of your body uh, through the dancing. So this course might be uh, very interesting for you and also um that you can that, that, really that's the, find it mm -hmm. that's the thing i think it's really interesting because there is not so many uh masters who knows about that about ballet so sometimes they work the body but it's not a specific what we need you know because we really know about our body and you know about the turnout and stuff and Sometimes it's, it's difficult to find someone who is really, you know, there for you, for what you really need. 
So I don't know. I just really like it, and I think it could it could be something for the future. I think so, definitely. I think it's important that somebody who uh, who is in the dance world or or is a dancer then actually knows and understands when you put the two together, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but tell me, what is your wish for when this is all over? Well, I wish to have like so many shows. I wish <laughs> to have all the theaters in the world, like full of people, full of shows, full of performances, ballet, flamenco, jazz, musicals, everything. Everything has to go up now. Also, I think the the public is is waiting for that. Like I think people is waiting to see things, to go con to the concerts. That's my feeling. Mm. I'm glad you and say that. That you think uh, also, um, you know, that the audience are uh, or the audience is is really wanting to to have this and. and yeah, uh, I, I, I think. More, a lot of people is waiting to do to do things because art is, is you know that we are there to for everyone to make me to make them feel to make them forget about things to make them cry to make them feel things you know and people is waiting for that because they're at home doing nothing probably and yeah and of they course people... get, they cannot get anything from us right now Mm. And I also think for people, the streaming is not the same as the, or, you know, as being there and experiencing it. Yeah. yeah. I think the whole atmosphere that, that, that we, I mean, we as a dancers and the public create on the stage, on the, on the theater, mm. you cannot change this for, you know, for a computer and being at home in the sofa where you might be watching something else, you know at the same time when you know that you are watching ballet yeah. i don't know it's, it's just weird we i i watched the other day my my colleagues the the ballet junior because they did the the live streaming and i saw the the general rehearsal the day before and then i saw the the live streaming and yeah no not it's the not, the same. Yeah. not the same not the same it's really, I find it really hard to watch, you know, because you're like busy with the phone. Oh, I miss that. Uh, yeah. It's not the same. <laughs> I've heard that also that somebody said, you know, it's that distractions that we are so used to doing that. No, you, know, you um, are hungry and you, you get up yeah. and eat something and then. Yeah. It's in the theater, you cannot do that. So it's just different. Mm. No, that's true. But listen, thank you so much for your time and oh, for no, talking to you. me and your insight. And it's it's lovely. And I am so happy that you're doing that for your for the younger uh, generation and and from your uh, from the town where you live. I think it's really great. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, I just feel special because uh, I mean, it's it's a small city, so not many dancers from there, you know, like we are in, in the professional level. Now more more and more, but like I was one of the first ones, let's say, to go, you know, to the EMB or become a principal dancer in Madrid, things like that. And the the teachers, obviously, because now they're they're my friends, they are using me quite a lot for this because it's it's good for the oh, for yeah, the little one. Yeah. Mm. It's good for them to, you know, it's motivation for them to to let them see that that is possible. You can make it, you know, you can you can make it to the top. So I think it's really nice and yeah, they they love it and everyone knows me there. So it's it's mm. really nice. It's really nice That's to share wonderful. with them, you know. Yeah, I I think it's that thing where where children then see, okay, but he was just like us, he also lived here. But look where he's now, you know, exactly. and, and then you exactly. can talk about that, how that happened. No, that's that's wonderful. But um, uh, you know, I've recorded this. May I post it on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course. Of Thank course. you very no much. Problem.
Thank you. I hope, I hope, I hope you can understand me because my English is like. Your English is lovely. <laughs> no, your English is wonderful. <laughs> what do you English. speak? Do you speak a Swiss German there in? in... Oh, no. I have no idea of, of German. Oh, I try oh, okay. to try to learn it at the beginning, but it's just really hard. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so. But when, whenever you come to Vienna, please write, and um, and I would love to meet you in person. Yes, please. Hof hopefully soon. I hope yeah. we can travel. I hope yeah. we can travel a lot around soon. Yeah, that would be wonderful. But it's not um, easy now. Yeah. I know somebody in the company, uh, Matthew Knight. Uh-huh. Yeah. He's a good friend of mine. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he, he trained with my daughter at, um, in, in, um, in London. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I know. I will, I will tell him tomorrow. What? Sorry? <laughs> I will tell him tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Tell him that uh, you have to Yes. <laughs> tell him, please. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so have a lovely weekend. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so lovely to talk to you. Ciao. It's now lovely to talk to you too. Okay, bye. Bye.